In this video, we're going to learn about virtual destructors in C++. Using the virtual keyword when creating our destructors is sometimes necessary to ensure that our objects are destroyed correctly. In particular, if we have a base class pointer that is pointing to a drive class object instance on the heap, unless we've created the base class destructor using the virtual keyword, we're at risk of having a memory leak occur when we delete the object. Let's go over an example of this and how to fix it using the virtual keyword. So we'll start off by defining a base class. We'll say here class base data and our base data object instances are going to have a single public member variable called data that's going to be a pointer to an integer. In the base data constructor, we're going to accept one size argument. And what we'll do is dynamically allocate space for an array of integers on the heap of that size. And data is going to be a pointer to that dynamically allocated memory. Now in our destructor, we're going to free that dynamically allocated memory. We'll say tilde base data. And then in here, we're going to call delete data to free that dynamically allocated memory. Now it's important we do that. If we didn't do that, we would have a memory leak and we want to avoid memory leaks in our program. We'll also do a C out here just to say that the base data destructor is running. So that way we can keep track of when this destructor runs. So we'll save this and now we've got our base class defined. So next let's define our derive class. We'll say here class derived data, colon, public, base data. So derived data is going to inherit from base data. So it's also going to have a public member variable data that's going to be a pointer to what's going to be dynamically allocated data as well, because we're going to call the base data constructor from our derived data constructor. So what we'll do is define another public member variable, this time called extra data. And extra data is going to be another pointer to dynamically allocated data. So we'll say here, derive data, int size, int extra size. So the constructor here is going to accept two arguments, size and extra size. We're going to call the base class constructor with the given size. So that means just like the base class base data, the data member variable is also going to be set up to point to dynamically allocated data on the heap. But then in here, we're gonna also dynamically allocate memory for extra data with this extra size. So we'll say extra data is equal to new int extra size. And now because we've dynamically allocated data in the constructor, in the destructor, we're also gonna to to free that dynamically allocated memory. So we'll say, tilde derive data and then we'll say delete extra data to free that memory so there's no memory leak and then we'll also output that the derive data destructor is running just so we can track that and we'll follow this with an inline so now we've defined our derive class as well and it's very important in the case of our derive class here, that the base class destructor also runs because this derive class also has a data member variable because it inherited it right here. We said public base data and we call the base data constructor, which dynamically allocates space using data as a pointer to that space. So the derive data objects they must also free that space when they're destroyed. If you're familiar with destructors and inheritance, you might expect the base class destructor to also be called when a derived class object is destroyed. Let's try it out. So we're gonna say here, base data star base is equal to new base data 10. And then we'll say delete base. And if we save and run the program, we're gonna get base data destructor is running. And that makes sense. No surprises here that we create a base data object instance and when we delete it, we're going to have the destructor run. Now let's try to do this with a derived data object. So we'll say 
derived data star derived is equal to new derived data. And we'll say 10 and 10 for constructor arguments. And then we'll say delete derived. And if we save this and run it, we're going to get that both destructors run and that the derived data destructor runs first, followed by the base data destructor. Now, if you're familiar with how destructors work with inheritance, this really isn't surprising. This is what we expect. We expect that when we delete the derived class object instance, that the derived class destructor is going to run first, followed by the base class destructor. And that's exactly what we get. Now, the problem is going to come in when we have pointers, specifically base class pointers to derived class object instances. When we try to delete those derived class objects using the base class pointer, we're going to find that only the base class destructor is going to run. That's a problem because then our derived class objects are not being properly deleted and we're going to have a memory leak. Let's go over an example of that. So oftentimes to take advantage of polymorphism, we'll have an array or some of the data structure of pointers to objects, which could be of the base class type, but could also be of the derived class type. So here we'll say base data star array, open bracket, close bracket is equal to, and we'll make this a small array of dynamically allocated objects. We'll say new base data five, and then new derived data four and four. So typically we would do some work with this array of dynamically allocated objects. We might have something like a loop that would go through each object in the array and call some member function for each object in the array. And the idea is that we're taking advantage of polymorphism where we don't care what the underlying type of the object is. We know that it has this member function we can call. And the idea is we'd be using polymorphism to write more efficient code with less code duplication. But once we're done working with this array of pointers to dynamically allocated objects, we would want to destroy the objects. So we would say here for int i is equal to zero, i is less than two, i plus plus, and we would attempt to delete each object instance in the array to free up that dynamically allocated memory. So if we save and run our program, Watch what happens now. We get base data destructors running first. And that makes sense because the first element in our array is a pointer to a base data object instance on the heap. But then we get base data destructors running again with no derived data destructors running. That seems odd because here, the second element in our array is a pointer to a derived data object instance on the heap. So why is only the base data destructor running in this case? What's going on here is static binding. So here we have an array of base data type pointers. And when we say delete array at index i, static binding is occurring. And only the base data destructor is going to run. What we need is dynamic binding, such that at runtime, as opposed to at compile time, it is determined which destructor to call. So what we'll say here is virtual. And this will make it so that the call here to delete is now dynamic. The decision as to which destructor to run is now going to be made at runtime as our program is executing, depending on the type of the object, whether it's drive data or base data. So if we save and run our program now, now we get derived data destructors running, followed by base data destructors running for that object pointed to by the second element of our array. And that's what we want. It's really important that we do that. If that derived data destructor doesn't run, then this dynamically allocated memory is never going to be freed via the destructor running. And so this would result in a type of bug called a memory leak. And a memory leak can be a big problem for our programs. So when we're defining a class in our C++ programs, if there's a possibility of another class inheriting from that class, it's very important that we use the virtual keyword when defining the destructor for that class. 
That's how we can use virtual destructors in C++. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers.